Hello and welcome to the Eldrick Church. We're nearly at the end of lockdown and today is Advent Sunday. Advent, which means coming, is a season of expectation and preparation and we prepare to celebrate the coming of Christ as a, were, as a baby. Also, to look ahead to his triumphant return at the end of time. As you know, we've just completed a series on the exile. The church is in a similar situation to Israel in exile, waiting and hoping uh, in prayerful expectation for the coming of Jesus. During Advent, we're going to be exploring the idea of God with us, Emmanuel. So let's start with a prayer. God of hope, who brought love into the world, be the love that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought peace into the world, be the peace that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought joy into the world, be the joy that dwells between us. God of hope, the rock we stand on, be the centre and focus of our lives, always and particularly at this Advent time. Amen. Advent is the beginning of the church's year. It covers the four Sundays before Christmas. It is a sort of countdown to welcoming the Lord. Many people have an advent calendar with a little window to open each day in December. And over the last few years, these windows often contain chocolates. Not sure what that symbolizes. But along with many churches, we count down with an advent wreath, which has five candles. We light a new candle each week so that by Christmas Eve, four are lit then on Christmas morning, we light the fifth candle, the one to celebrate and signify the Jesus' birthday. Today, Julie is going to light the first candle for Advent Sunday before we hear Richard read from Isaiah. Shout, a full-throated shout, hold nothing back, a trumpet blast shout. Tell my people what's wrong with their lives, face my family Jacob with their sins. They're busy, busy, busy at worship, and they love studying all about me. To all appearances, they are a nation of right-living people, law-abiding and God-honouring. They ask me, what's the right thing to do? And they love having me on their side. But they also complain. Why do we fast and you don't look out our way? Why do we humble ourselves and you don't even notice? Well, here's why. The bottom line on your fast days is profit. You drive your employees much too hard. You fast, but at the same time, you bicker and fight. You fast, but you swing a mean fist. The kind of fasting you do won't get your prayers off the ground. Do you think this is the kind of fast day I am after? A day to show off humility? To put on a pious, long face and parade around solemnly in black? Do you call that fasting? A fast day that I, God, would like? This is the kind of fast day I'm after. To break the chains of injustice. Get rid of exploitation in the workplace. Free the oppressed and cancel debts. What I'm interested in seeing you do is 
sharing your food with the hungry, inviting the homeless poor into your homes, putting clothes on the shivering ill-clad, being available to your own families. Do this and the lights will turn on and your lives will turn around at once. Your righteousness will pave your way. The God of glory will secure your passage. Then when you pray, God will answer. You'll call out for help and I'll say, here I am, a full life in the emptiest of places. If you get rid of unfair practices, quit blaming the victims, quit gossiping about other people's sins, if you are generous with the hungry and start giving yourselves to the down and outs, your lives will begin to glow in the darkness. Your shadowed lives will be bathed in sunlight. Today is not only Advent Sunday, it's also the fifth Sunday of the month. And here at the Eldrick Church, we've traditionally used Fifth Sundays to focus on charities that we support. Today we're going to hear about the work of Tear Fund, a Christian charity which works in many of the neediest parts of the world. We're going to start by seeing a short video about the work of Tear Fund, and then we'll listen to that great Advent hymn, Hills of the North Rejoice which speaks about how every corner of the world is preparing for Jesus' return. And then there'll be another short video about a lady called Tabam, a Syrian lady, who's been through an appalling time, but with the help of Tear Fund, is beginning to get her life together. Tear Fund is a Christian relief and development agency working in more than 50 countries worldwide. We work in partnership with communities, churches and local organisations to tackle the complex challenges of poverty, injustice and conflict, which tears home away from families. The church is called to challenge this injustice, restoring a sense of home by showing Jesus' love and care in action. God created the earth to be our home, and whatever home looks like, it should be a peaceful place where daily life is rewarding, where relationships with God, ourselves and each other and creation have the potential to flourish. Yet all around the world, people's sense of home is being shattered. Millions of people have had their lives torn apart and live in fear without the daily essentials needed for their growth and well-being. Tear Fund's Bible-based response is that God is compassionate and cares for everyone, as we see in the many Bible passages about justice and care for the poor. It is clear that something has gone badly wrong. Our broken relationship with God means that we don't follow his commands to uphold justice and care for the oppressed. Our broken relationship with ourselves means that we don't fully recognize that we and all people have been made in God's likeness with infinite dignity and worth. Our broken relationship with God's creation can be seen in the overconsumption, famine and extreme weather that destroy crops for the poorest. Our broken relationship with others show it means that we don't love one another as we love ourselves resulting in conflict between families, communities and nations, and ultimately in armed conflict where innocent people are killed or displaced. The good news is that through Jesus Christ, God is at work to restore all these severed relationships with God himself, with ourselves, with each other, and with the natural environment. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life, and have it to the full. Tear Fund is a movement of Christians and churches who strive to restore those broken relationships by demonstrating the love of God in action. 
by giving, praying and challenging injustice, we are following Jesus where the need is greatest and we invite you to do the same. It's hard to explain the meaning of home. It's the feeling of having all my family and holding them dear in my heart. All that's left in this photo is me. Everything else is gone. My husband, my child, garden and home. I miss them. I miss my home. Because of the warfare and the living conditions, we decided it was better to leave. We had fighting on both sides and we were in the middle. At 3 a.m. my children and I left our home. We fled, keeping as quiet as we could. I could only bring our photos and ideas which I hid in my clothing. It was a terrifying ordeal for the children. The dead bodies and fighting scared them. We came across that everywhere we went. Tiffany is reaching out to the most vulnerable uh, refugees in Lebanon in order to overcome the trauma which they have experienced. 
both when they were fleeing from Syria and also when they are now living in a very tough condition. As a Christian organization, Tierfon works with all those who are in need regardless of religion, which often are being done through our partners, Christian organization and, and churches. And this by itself is a great testimony for anybody who are witnesses the action of Tierfond. We experience difficulties. The water here is salty and scarce. Everything is different in Syria. Our houses were better. I miss my house, my land and my garden. Sometimes I cry a lot. The needs in Syria and Lebanon are so great today. But it is a privilege for Tierfon to work with the partners on the ground. Tahadi is helping women like Taman in an area where 75% live in extreme poverty. And Tahadi is a home for many of the families who are living in this area. Here they can get help with education to their children. They have a health center. They have psychologists, social workers, helping those who have been traumatized. One thing more, it is skill training. As Taman, she is learning to saw, so she can earn some money and uh, later on, hopefully, she can go back to Syria and she can use the skills she has learned at Tahadi Center. The Tahadi Center helped me stand on my feet. Being a seamstress, I am the breadwinner. My four children go to school here. I hope for a happy future for my children and never experience what I experienced. I hope to teach my children to sew, to open a small sewing business in Syria and have a better life than the one I had. I wish that Syria would be safe again. I wish for that every waking second and that we'd go back home and have peace. If you would like to make a gift to Tear Fund, you can make an electronic payment to the church bank account, marking it Tear Fund. You could also email Sharon to tell her what you've done. Or you can send a check payable to the Eldrick Church, not to Tear Fund, and send that to Sharon Arnold. You can get her address from the church office. The details will be shown at the end of the service, and a huge thank you. Now Julie is going to lead us in prayer before we listen to our final hymn. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. This both reflects the work of Tear Fund and also sets us an example to follow. Our beloved God, we come in prayer before you. We remember in our prayers those closest to our hearts, family and friends. The weeks and months draw on and the pandemic continues to affect our lives, our homes, our own health and that of those around us, whether in mind or body. We are weary, frustrated and saddened by the ongoing rules and restrictions which stop us seeing and sharing with those we love, friends we miss and daily living far from normality. But today is the first Sunday in Advent and we know that you sent your son Jesus Christ the best gift of hope, peace, joy and compassion we could ever receive. You have seen how people have suffered this past year we think of those living in extreme poverty and despair, and we pray that our hearts have been moved enough that through us you will give them the gift of faith, a better tomorrow through Jesus Christ, hope of the world. And so as we approach this time of Christmas, when festive lights are going up, parcels and cards arrive on the doorstep, Christmas films and Christmas singing on the TV and the radio. 
let us not forget that first Christmas where 2,000 years ago a young couple travelled 90 or so miles on a donkey to be counted in an annual censor under an oppressed dictatorship to start their young family far from home in less than best conditions adorned by poor shepherds and worshipped by great and knowledgeable men watched over by the Bethlehem star and God's own messengers, his host of angels. We give thanks for those who have worked tirelessly in successfully finding a vaccine for COVID and provided the much needed. We offer our prayers of thanks and of sorrow. We pray for those who strive to produce policy and governance which is controversial, fraught and fragile. For those working on the front line in food outlets, schools, the NHS and charities working with the most vulnerable in our communities. We especially pray today for the work of the Tear Fund who work with the poorest and most disadvantaged families who despite all the obstacles posed through the lack of finance and resource, the effects of global climate change, disease and hunger, their goal to provide new beginnings and empowerment in all sorts of very practical ways, still shines through with love, hope and freedom found in our Lord and Saviour Jesus. So help us as we move into a new week to be thankful for the many blessings we have. Help us to watch out for our neighbours and to be kind and thoughtful. Help us to pray, help us to pray that you will comfort those who are bereaved and that you will hold them close in their saddest hours. And finally, help us to know and remember you are always without fail Therefore, therefore us, if only we ask. We offer our prayers of thanks, of sorrow, and our request to you, dear Lord, and to your Son, Jesus Christ, our friend, our light, our comfort. Amen. <laughs>
let's finish with a prayer. And do please join in with the responses. Is it true that God loves the world? Amen. This is true. Is it true that God loves all people? Amen. This is true. Is it true that Jesus came to make all things new? Amen. This is true. Then let us go as those whom God has called to bear witness to the love and justice of heaven, to be beacons of light and signs of transformation, and of such is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. This Advent is going to be a bit different from that of any other year. Many people are finding the restrictions and short days and long, cold evenings difficult to cope with. So we thought we could add a little cheer by asking everyone to be a star for Eldwick. And that simply means putting a star of some kind in your front window doing it during Advent, as a way of bringing a bit of joy and hope to people walking past. So will you join us? It could be a, any kind of star or decoration. Here's one we thought we could hand, hang in our window. I'm sure a lot of people will get very creative with fairy lights. But if it's going to be difficult getting to the shops, you might like to make a star. What Anne did was to cut a triangle from a piece of paper, folded, so you get a shape like that, and then cut two of them, cardboard, this came from uh, a cereal packet, two, cut, two triangles like that, cover them in silver foil and sellotape them together, and there you have a star. As our granddaughter says, easy peasy. Let's fill Eldrick with lots of stars this Advent, just as the night was full of stars on the night that Jesus was born. As lockdown finishes, uh, we hope to be able to worship with a congregation in church again next Sunday and we will email you to confirm this and also to say which group will be coming next Sunday. We also have some special Christmas online services and events in the pipeline which we will tell you about and if you would like someone to pray for you or for somebody else please use the email address which will pop up on the screen shortly. There's also an email address for if you'd like someone to talk to. Don't forget to look at the brand new church website which lots lots of information about the church and what we're doing. So goodbye, thank you for joining us, have a good day and keep safe.
Thank mm-hmm. you.